How's it going? Today on Milanese Math, we're solving equations with variables on both sides of the equal sign. Okay, so what do we do if we have to solve an equation, but there's variables on both sides of the equal sign, like this one, 8u equals 3u plus 35. Well, the idea here is to either get all the variables to the left of the equal sign or to the right, and it doesn't really matter which place you go. For me, I always look at both terms, in this case an 8u and a 3u, and I go to the side with the bigger coefficient. In this example, 8 is bigger than 3, so I'm going to go to the left. That means I want to get rid of the variables on the right-hand side so that they'll all be on the left. So if I'm getting rid of terms with variables on the right, that's a 3u, and I can get rid of that using inverse operations. So I'm going to subtract 3u as my first step to get rid of the variables on the right. Now, of course, I also have to do that on the left. 8u subtract 3u is 5u, okay? So on the right-hand side, our three u's cancel, and I'll drop down a 35. Now we've solved the problem of having variables on both sides, and all we have to do is solve this for like a regular equation. Five times u equals 35, so using inverse operations, the opposite of multiplying by five is dividing by five. And let's see what that leaves us with. If we cross out our fives, we have u by itself, we get 35 divided by five, which is seven. So we have a final answer of u equals seven. Okay, so let's use that same idea to solve a problem that's a little bit trickier. Uh, 3n plus 46 equals one plus eight n. As always, I like to draw a line down the equal sign. Now, as I looked at this problem, I noticed it does have terms with variables on both sides of the equal sign. Over here, we have a 3n. On the right, we have an 8n. I need to either get them all to go to the left or all to the right. And for me, I go to the side with the bigger coefficient. So we've got a coefficient of three and a coefficient of eight. I'm gonna go to the right-hand side since eight is bigger than three. If I'm gonna go to the right, that means I want to get rid of variables on the left. There's three n on the left. Using inverse operations, I can subtract three n uh, to cancel out that term. Now, of course, if I do that on the left, I have to do it on the right. I wanna point something out though. When you go to write down a minus 3n on the right-hand side, for organizational purposes, if you would stack it right below the 8n, since those are like terms, this will really help you out later on. I wouldn't want to put it underneath a 1 because those aren't like terms. I can't subtract them, but I can subtract these. Okay, so let's see what we have. Working left to right, these terms cancel, and I have 46 by itself. On the right-hand side, nothing has happened to the 1, but we do have 8n subtract 3n, that's a positive 5n, okay? Now from here, we solve this like we would any two-step equation. Look for the constants, those are numbers by themselves, and get rid of them first. So on the right-hand side of the equal sign, I do have a constant, it's positive one. Inverse operation says subtract one. So I'm gonna subtract one uh, from this one, but again, if I do it on the right, I have to do it on the left. So let's see where that leaves us. 46 subtract one is 45. Our ones cancel and we can drop down the 5n to the next line. Okay, so to finish this off, all we have to do is use inverse operations. This is five times n, the inverse would be division. And so we're gonna divide by our coefficient, which is five. So let's see what that gives us. Uh, 45 divided by five is nine and we finally have n by itself. So final answer is n equals nine, and that is a little bit about how to solve equations with variables on both sides. 